Hey guys, my name is Kristen. Thank you for clicking on this video today. Before I get started, I just want to let you know I already had my April budget completely created and filmed ahead of time because we were supposed to be on vacation in Florida this week. But if you follow me on Instagram, then you already know we canceled our vacation because of all the craziness going on in the world right now. And while I know that was the best decision, I just feel like it would be kind of weird to share that outdated budget now because our budget definitely needs to change. We are all experiencing these crazy unprecedented times. I know everyone's sick of hearing the word unprecedented, but it's true. So we have to make some changes in our finances. We have to be able to adapt, move some things around and switch up our plan a little bit. So I really thought it was important to take the time, refilm this entire video and kind of take a little bit of a different approach this month. A lot of people are struggling and I wanted to take this opportunity to show you what's called a bare bones budget. Now it's really a funny word, but basically what that means is you are going to take your budget and strip it down. So you're going to remove anything extra, any additional expenses that you just don't need that month because the point of this bare bones budget is to really get you down to the very minimum amount that you need to live, that you need to survive for a month. In times of struggle, like we're experiencing right now, it's really important to kind of get rid of all this fluff and make sure that we are taking care of the most important things in our lives. So that's really going to require a lot of prioritizing. And if you've been to my channel before, then you've probably heard me talk about how I believe your budget should reflect your priorities. Your spending should reflect your priorities. So I should be able to take a look at your budget and tell you exactly what you value most in your life. And I can see that by where you're allocating your money. So if you are struggling in this uncertain time that we are all experiencing right now, the very first step you need to do to take back control of your finances is to redo your budget and come up with this bare bones budget. It's going to give you kind of a baseline of where to start and it's really going to help you see where you need to prioritize your money at this time. So I thought I would use my April budget video and show you exactly how I'm going to create a bare bones budget for my family using our exact expenses going through my budget video just like I do any other month, but I'm going to strip our expenses down as well and really just show you with actual numbers where you can try to pull extra money. If you're a visual learner like I am, I thought this would be the best way to kind of combine my normal budget video and this example to show you and then hopefully you're able to take that and apply it to your own specific budget with your specific numbers. So let's go ahead and hop onto the computer. All right, so we're here in my budget spreadsheet. I'm just gonna show you how I do it and then you can kind of apply the basic principles to your own budget and your own numbers. Now, before we get started quick, I just wanna tell you if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section and I will help you the best I can. My husband was on vacation this week and last, so his pays are going to be less this month. My husband is paid on March 31st, so since all of our March bills were already technically paid with the first two paychecks in March, I'm going to just count that as the first paycheck for April, so I'm actually going to go ahead and estimate three paychecks for this month. We do not do anything different when we get a third paycheck. We just put all of our money into our account, pay anything that needs to get paid, fill our envelopes the same, put the money to our mortgage the same, and then anything extra will go towards whatever our savings goals are at that time. I'm going to go ahead and put his three paychecks the first one being March 31st and then the next two in April at 1650, 1700 and 1600. And I'm just kind of arbitrarily choosing numbers here because I know they will be on the lower end since he's on vacation. I also will be taking $416.33 out of my business at the very beginning of this month. And then you can see here, I'm just putting both paychecks in the second half of the month, but because of the way I budget, it 
doesn't really matter too much where I put it. The first pay, we're gonna take out the $715 that I normally take out. And then since we technically have two paychecks listed here in the second half of the month, I am going to double this mortgage to $1430. The reason I'm doing that is because every single two weeks, my husband and I take $715 out and we put it to our mortgage account. It's basically the equivalent of paying your mortgage on a bi-monthly basis. If some of you do that through a bank, we do it ourselves. And all it does is, since there's 52 weeks in a year, it ends up giving you one full extra payment at the end of the year. So since we have two paychecks, my husband's paid every two weeks. So essentially every time he's paid, I transfer $715. So we're going to do $715 in the first half of the month and $1430 in the second half. But again, his other two paychecks fall in the second half of the month. We need to focus on shelter. So we just did with the mortgage, we need to focus on utilities. So we're going to cover the natural gas, the electricity, the water and sewer, the internet and cable. It's not an essential, but I know we have enough to cover it. So I'm just including that all in our utilities right now, our cell phone and our trash, okay? So that's natural gas, 122.67, electricity, 89.19, water and sewer, $160.15, internet and cable, 126.65, cell phone, 197.93, and trash, $30, which goes to our savings account because that's only billed on a quarterly basis, and I just paid that about a week ago. But now we're getting down to our cash envelope. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to zero out all the cash envelopes that I know are non-essential. So house maintenance, I don't have anything in our house maintenance envelope at home currently, but I do have $11,000 sitting in an emergency fund at the moment. So I'm not going to take the extra money and contribute to our house maintenance fund right now because we are trying to make this a bare bones budget. So I'm going to take out all of these cash envelopes that are non-essential categories. Fuel, $75 and $75. Right now I'm gonna drop that to 50 and 50 because not only is gas way down, but we're barely traveling anywhere. So I could probably put it lower than that, but I'm gonna leave it at 50 and 50 for now. Vehicle maintenance, I know we have a little bit of money in that cash envelope if something would come up. And again, we do have an emergency fund if we have a major issue with our car. So I'm going to go ahead and zero those out as well for the entire month. Groceries, I gotta say, with us being stuck in the house, we're probably overspending on groceries a little bit and it's not necessarily just because my kids and my husband are eating every single thing they can find, but also because I usually buy mostly generic and the stores are basically empty. So we have had to settle for whatever we could get our hands on. I'm sure a lot of you are in the same boat and our grocery bill has definitely reflected that. But I'm going to still go ahead and leave it 225 and 225 for now because I'm not sure how things are going to play out out for the rest of the month and we are pretty good on food I'm not going out and stacking up on a ton of extra food I'm just still getting what we need for the week so we're gonna leave that alone for now restaurants are gonna be zeroed out because we are not going to any restaurants right now Sam's Club um, I think I'm going to put leave Sam's Club for now but I'm going to put it down to 20 because I do think we're gonna have to pick up a couple things at Sam's next week but I'm gonna try and keep it real low. Sports and activity fees are zero for now and I am going to leave the I'm gonna actually up the kid commissions because they have been doing a lot more chores since we've been stuck in the house. Kids stuff I am going to zero that out as well because I did end up purchasing a couple things for the kids on Amazon while we were stuck at home just to keep them entertained. So basically that can kind of just retroactively pay for the things I ordered them. All right, so this is our cash envelope section. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna go up here to church. So this is a personal decision. For us, we will absolutely continue giving our charitable donations both to our church and to World Vision right now, even when we're doing a bare bones budget. That's really important to me. We don't give a full tithe so as it is, and I'm not willing to cut that out. 
Again, I can't tell you how to do your budget. So if you are someone who ties regularly or gives to charity regularly, the thought is that you would normally do that regardless, but that is up to you. So I can't tell you how to set up your budget. That is how we are going to do it. We're going to leave our charitable donations in there. Stash, this is a monthly maintenance fee. I cannot stop that at the moment. So that's just a dollar. And then our auto insurance, both life insurances and our pet insurance will remain. Those are considered essentials for us. Pet food, my dogs will need food probably the second half of the month. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there. All of my pets have all of their visits and their shots now. They're all caught up. Again, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, if something happens, we do have an emergency fund that I can use for that. So I'm going to go ahead and zero out the vet care. Now, if you have pets and you do not have an emergency fund, then a vet care envelope or sinking fund might still be essential to you because God forbid if something happens to your pet, you need to be able to take care of them and you don't want to have to go into debt to do so. That's my opinion on the vet care category. Cat litter, that's kind of essential. So that will come in a couple weeks for $23. Now, getting down to personal money. On a normal bare bones budget, I would probably cut out the personal money. However, I know that we're going to have enough to cover it. So I'm going to leave it in there for now because my husband and I both get a little grumpy if we don't have our personal cash. If we were struggling right now or if things get any worse in the future with this situation that we're all dealing with right now, the personal money will end up going. Right now we're gonna keep it 65 for my husband and 60 for me. The gym membership, he is contracted, so that's going to stay for now, 995. Gifts, I'm gonna go ahead and zero that one out as well. Lunch money, I'm gonna zero that one out. My kids aren't even in school. <laughs> Doctor and medications, I am going to keep that one for now. And with all the health risks we're facing right now, I think it's important to keep the money in the doctor and medication envelope. That way, if we need anything, we have the money, we can go grab whatever we need without worry. Toiletries, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm gonna zero that out as well. Spotify, I think my husband will probably keep that. He really likes Spotify. Again, if things get worse for us or we do find ourselves really having to cut our spending another level down, Spotify would go for sure. Spend, I am going to still give us some spend money right now because if we do happen to need anything additional from the store that is not food, that's going to come out of our spend money since we're cutting all of these other envelopes right now. Clothing, I'm going to cut. Haircuts, I'm going to cut. There's enough in there for my husband to get a haircut. My son just got one. I just got one and my daughter just got one. So that's going to be zeroed out as well. Date night, uh, maybe date night in this month. Um, I'm going to take out the date night money for now. Now we do have Amazon Prime coming out this month. I actually looked that up a couple days ago. And I do need to make a payment for my son's church camp. I don't know what will be happening with that, but I think we'll hopefully be back to normal here by the time that rolls around. And as far as our pool membership, we are still planning on paying for the pool membership this year. So I was budgeting $133. Again, if we didn't have the money right now, that would just not be a priority for us. It's just not important enough. We do not need the pool we do need electricity in our home. So you guys really just have to kind of prioritize here. We are going to make the savings for bills. I upped this a little bit. If you watch my budgeting videos each month, then you probably know this used to be $230, but I realized we were not including our yearly Amazon Prime in that, and we were not including our yearly ID theft insurance. So I added those in on a monthly basis. So I upped that savings to $245 that we will still transfer over to our savings account to pay for for the couple of bills that we save for year round and the couple of bills that are debited directly from our savings account. 
Now, if you come over here and you look at our cash envelopes, we are down to $245 the first half of the month and only $120 the second half of the month. So again, if you watch my videos, you know we're usually in more like the four or $500 range. So that cut off a substantial amount of expenses for us. Let's go ahead and see what everything comes out to. All right, guys, so in the first half of the month here, it is showing a negative, which is okay because that's much lower than it normally is pay-wise for us for the first half of the month. And then the second half of the month, because we have those two paychecks, it's actually showing that we have $900 here. So when you subtract the $103 from the 900, that's going to give us a surplus of just about $800 for the month. If that's how we actually finish out, then at the end of the month, I will take that $800 and I will put it in our savings account. That is our bare bones budget. And as you saw, there's kind of different levels that I go through and cut our expenses when necessary. I'll kind of cut the first level, which is just the extra spending and the cushions that we build in for ourselves. And and then next we go down and we really cut into those cash envelopes. And then as I mentioned, if we get to the point where we have to cut back another level, we'll cut some of those other extras like the gym, the Spotify, the personal money. So take the time and really go through your budget in the same manner. Even if you want to write out different lists of different tiers of expenses that you can cut depending on how dire your financial situation gets. And again, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. I really want to help you guys figure this out and I really want to help you find some peace of mind during this difficult time. All right, so I'm popping back on here because I finished filming this video for the second time now and I finished editing it and I realized that I forgot to include some important expenses. It's not a big deal. We're still going to take any money left and just put it in our savings. But I realized that since I was technically counting three paychecks in this month that I forgot to add all of the cash envelope numbers for the third paycheck. So like I said, even though it's not extra money, when we do have that third paycheck, we are still paid every two weeks and we still need to take the cash envelope money out every single paycheck so that we have that money to get us through those two weeks until the next paycheck. I do apologize that I forgot to include that. I hope this doesn't make it confusing for you. Thanks for sticking with me if you made it this far. That was our bare bones budget. And like I said, this is kind of going to be our guideline for the foreseeable future since we really don't know what to expect over the next coming weeks. If you found any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and share it with your own friends and family if you think it could be helpful to them as well. I really appreciate you being here today and checking out this video. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you real soon. Again, I just want to tell you that I'm thinking of you and I'm sending you love and light and positive vibes and please do the best you can to keep yourself and your family safe and healthy, and hopefully I'll see you back here real soon. Bye.